in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk up to two or three people. Just welcome them. Hallelujah. It's always a blessing. You cannot imagine how excited I am every week to bring us the word of the Lord. And you see, as a man of God, your responsibility is not to be celebrated or to build an empire for yourself as a true minister of the gospel your primary responsibility is to be an extension of the power the life and the glory of God let's look at a scripture Jeremiah 23 verse 4 Jeremiah 23 Verse 4. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. It says, And I will set up shepherds. over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither be lacking saith the Lord and so when God anoints a man a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven. Not just any revelation you read around, but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building, changing, empowering the people. See, our ministration in the New Testament is that of the Spirit. Meaning, when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing, you are receiving more than information. Is that true? There is an activity. It's a transfer. This is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word. That while you are sitting right now listening to me, there is a spiritual transfer. Something is entering your spirit. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. It says, And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Let me tell you something. Without the ministration of the spirit, every other thing we are doing is just noise. It is the ability to convey spiritual realities. Not just the English. Not just the grammar. Are you getting my point now? But there is an impartation upon your spirit man. And that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught. Without the spirit backing the word, there is no supply of grace to become. It says, as many as believed in him, even to them that believed on his name, he gave them what? Power to become. Not power to hear. Power to become. Meaning that when the word of God is taught in truth, it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good. It should activate something in your spirit and make you become it. Because the word of God is not a thing. The Greek word word is logos. Right? And Jesus the word is called the living logos. He's a person. You can listen to my message, the living logos. Meaning the ultimate desire of God is not for you to learn scripture. 
the ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture light will enter you to become an epistle yourself a written epistle the apostle says hallelujah so this is what we are here to do tonight and i trust that the lord will bless our hearts in the name of jesus christ i'll share with us a few thoughts that the lord put in my heart and i trust that god will help us hallelujah first john chapter 5 one of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of christ especially pastors preachers is that we have lost the spirit of the word and i say this with a very heavy heart there's so much of talking going on sunday after sunday talking listen let me tell you the truth i'm not against the theological understanding of the word i'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word but if all we have to give people is just information just rema in terms of new discoveries we will never be able to produce a victorious army hallelujah it doesn't take being spiritual to have information it just takes being passionate you don't have to be spiritual you don't have to wait on god to get spiritual information you see the distinguishing factor let me tell you something many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives not necessarily not necessarily there is a spirit that is behind scripture one time the lord opened my eyes and when the lord opened my eyes i was in a vision and i saw a big like an ancient door or a gate if i will call it and when i looked closely i found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors actually a door many smaller doors are you following me now and on every one of those doors a scripture was written i saw the doors opening and closing meaning behind the letter behind the grammar behind the greek and hebrew and aramaic there is a spirit waiting to transform people the assignment the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life the spirit of life not just the spirit of truth the spirit of life he gives life to the information you are hearing and then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now so there is a lot of church going on there is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings but what we have done primarily as the church of the lord jesus christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing so it's just about theological dissertations or greek and hebrew somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read greek and hebrew and express you know the words in greek and hebrew and bring new words we think that the anointing is in the greek or the anointing is in the hebrew or the anointing is in the english or the communication there is a spirit there is a spirit that's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed there is a spirit listen as i'm talking to you right now there is a spirit that is compelling what i'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded that's why you can bring somebody that is hardened somebody that will even swear that i won't listen to god i won't do anything and when he sits down under this anointing from the prayer to the worship there is a spirit there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying now it is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on and all of a sudden you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn probably even insulting the meeting and yet he's silent and then paying attention listen i want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit everything we are doing in ministry is useless get this get this get this there is a wrong 
wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um you know accounting timekeeping other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the spirit not just being full of the holy ghost not just receiving the anointing the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people. Let me tell you something. I am always aware that it's a privilege for God's people to be gathered here week in, week out. Some persons have traveled from different states, different regions to be here. You cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a, a presentation of Bible or just a religious Bible study. It's more than that. That is the reason why let me tell you something it's good to listen to tapes it's good to read books but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper, there is already the ministration of the Spirit going on. Convictions are changing. Ideologies are shifting. Death is being replaced by life. The earthly is becoming the heavenly. Right? That revelation, listen, let me tell you. I've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress. I absolutely believe that before Jesus comes, you see, we've taught on the concept of immortality. There's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of Christ. But what we have not taught people, it is a scriptural concept. The Bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory. That the mortal can become the immortal. That the natural, the terrestrial can translate. There is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine are you getting what i'm saying now that divine dimension brothers and sisters is what we are called to demonstrate a believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never live with that transformation can i tell you something the ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the record or this is the testimony that God has given unto us what? eternal life 
the word here is zoe i know we talk a lot about it eternal life is not life after death listen listen eternal life is not life it's not the life you receive after death right what happens after death is the consummation the consummation right eternal life is the divine life god's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of god it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus that means you're coming to christ or you're coming accepting the lordship of christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of god gets to you the bible says the life of god is hidden in the christ himself right the son of god so the way you receive that life is to receive the son of god that's why we preach that's why souls must be won so it's it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone it's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them i don't know if you understand what i'm saying now because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven you would have left immediately you gave your life to christ so the technology is of course it secures your eternal destiny but the bible says god gave us life but that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of god so way god's quality and class of life you must embrace his son embracing the father will not give you that life hear me embracing an angel will not give you that life embracing revelation will not give you that life are you getting what i'm saying you must know what ministers that life. it says and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the Greek, Alos Paracletos, the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of Jesus here and now in your life. So my mortal body, that if I come to Jesus Christ and I truly receive his son, 
that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of galatians chapter 3 right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new it's not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the holy spirit that's why the bible says for this cause because people cannot discern the mystery some are weak some are sick and some do sleep is that not in your bible he said there is a mystery of the body the mystery of godliness the bible calls it that christ can dwell in a mortal body he said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of god in supernatural dimensions if you understand what i'm saying there are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with number one is the reality in christ the reality in christ the beginning of the experience of the believer in the new testament starts in christ outside of christ there is no initiation into the realities of the new testament right the 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 whole new testament starts the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in christ in christ in christ in christ never alone for with god all things are possible outside of him many things are not possible for in christ we are complete for in christ we are perfected are you getting the point now but then there are realities in christ for instance we are seated in heavenly places the bible tells us in christ the other reality is the experience of that truth here and now the experience of that truth here and now you can call it the reality in christ and then the experiential reality the bible tells us all through the new testament all that we have become in christ many times we do not understand why apostle paul when he makes certain statements 
about the believer he adds in christ and then we do not understand his communications some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in christ it means that the the experience of it is manifest here and now that's not true paul himself speaking to the hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify right and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth hebrews are you blessed tonight i have the sun and I have eternal life. He who has the Son has eternal life. Two verse 7 and 8. Let's look at 7 and 8. Hebrews 2 verse 7 and 8. It says, Thou hast made him. Remember, Paul was quoting from David. It was David, the son of Jesse, right? The king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this. He said, to none of the angels, right? Has he said at any point, thou art my son, you know, this and that. He did not put the world in subjection to any angel. And then the Bible says, talking about man now. He said, you have made him, or in, in, in uh, talking about Jesus now in his earthly work. He says, you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there was mistranslated it's supposed to be uh angelio not necessarily like the beings but it's an expression of god himself many times you see the bible use the word angel to mean the very lord himself is that not true many times in scripture you will see that uh, and certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou hast made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right it says thou hast crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing. That it, Listen, I hope you realize that in the New Testament, you are not anything until Christ is first it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So every time you see the Bible talking about man, find out whether Christ has become that thing. If Christ has not become it, because he must be the firstborn in all things. Meaning the dimension that the Christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earthwork of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if i stayed longer i would have unveiled more possibilities now if you have my life I authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities and immortality is one of the possibilities in that life divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this Zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should i want to receive the life of god it's like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should i want it what is the excellency of god's life over my natural life are you getting what i'm saying so the bible tells us speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man christ are you getting what i'm saying now i know that when you read this scripture he says who is man 
that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? he was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is a father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again are you are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the holy spirit are we are we understanding what i'm teaching tonight So the realities in Christ and then our experience of that reality. The Bible says something very powerful here. It said, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, right? For in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing that is not under him. At what point did this happen to man? Jesus himself said this. When he resurrected, what did he say? He said, all hail, he told the disciples. He says, all authority, exousia, delegated power has been given to me. When he was in the earth, all authority, let me say something that looks controversial. When he was in the earth, all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him. I hope you know. Absolutely. That's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power, he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that jurisdiction. Is it not in your Bible? So when Jesus resurrected, he now said, now, the scope, a coronation has happened to me. Right? The same way it happened to Adam. That dominion mandate has been restored. And he said, now, all authority has been given it says go in that light in other words in christ the bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality it says but now we see not what is Paul saying now Paul you just told us now that in Christ all things are finished is that not true when Jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can't bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get here so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ 
there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting a point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see it. oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned, let me tell you sincerely, at how distant we are from the things we talk about, the things we claim, and the experience of the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is too much talk in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who god is what he can do we make such bold statements about god but when it comes to bringing god in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the bible says for instance jesus christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of god have said that how many of us have been able to reproduce that reality we must admit that there is something we are not understanding we must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing and let me tell you where we are missing it this is it 
Romans chapter 8. Let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously. And if we do not change, a lot is going to go wrong. Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh do what? Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse six. For to be what? stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what dead but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so a man can watch oppression in his life and say no i went to school what what sort of oppression i mean if if you fail you fail it's not any demon anything you see that and then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness that all that you see is not all that there is there are many people for instance who look up and say there is no god because they are carnally minded they, they reason from the sensual realm let me tell you the church of the lord jesus christ in a bit and i teach you principles we just finished having financial principles but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce god into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i, I have studied a lot of people there is no man 
who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who changed the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just I, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say Kai, i beg jare you are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid me i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me one of the pastors um, came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when i went for the meeting a woman was pregnant brothers and sisters watch this at least biology tells us i'm not a doctor there are doctors here um so how the child is supposed to be formed eventually for reasons they cannot explain the child started turning mysteriously no the child does not turn mysteriously something turned it let me tell you the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120 there are spirits that are millions of years you call satan a liar you are right you call him a deceiver you are right you call him a fool you are very wrong satan is old are you hearing that absolutely you know sometimes the way people just talk me god forbid right spirit can do this and that and that it's not all about this it's not and and while you are talking the realm of the spirit is just watching you how old do you know in bible days all of us are not even up to teenagers right now right yet the ancient spirit of god gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education 
do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while this the bible says i am the truth i am reality when god began to build and train me god made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my earth work the holy spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation you see that for me the spirit of the living god is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that god will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of god jesus never became the christ he was the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of god came he made him the christ so when the bible says in christ it's not just saying in jesus alone in jesus yes but together with the spirit of life Look at what we have taught people about faith today look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of christ that we call faith right we teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo that's why it's not working let me tell you faith is a product of an encounter when the bible says faith comes by hearing do you hear what you read answer me you see we need to examine he was talking it was a spiritual language he was not even just talking about hearing with the ear there is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings and that's what produces true faith because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word The days that are coming will be fierce the days that are coming will be spiritual right now have you seen the way the world is going lately there is no embarrassment about spirituality again is that true everybody is opening up it used to be in secrecy before but right now there is an open confrontation it's like everybody is saying kai i'm not hiding it again i'm gay simple kill me if you will kill me up it's not today it has been like that another person is saying it's not only you two of us too another person is saying let me tell you i've not been a real christian this is my charm oh yeah you see everybody is confessing one by one one by one the meaning of that is darkness is about to reveal itself publicly right and it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two course of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens This is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious 
to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of God and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of God do on stage right there are so many people who now challenge their pastors challenge everybody are you the only one who will preach are you the only one we have a democratic church that can vote out throw out pastors because of policies have you read in first samuel i can't remember i think maybe chapter 15 or 13 one time when saul is that true when samuel told saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly is that true he was coming to make a sacrifice they gathered the people it's in your bible and then saul told the, i mean samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come and they waited for him they waited for him they waited for him after they waited for him people were scattering and the ego of the king saul was was at stake and he said kai this guy is not coming let me what offer the bond offering as soon as he offered the bond offering samuel came and he said well uh i'm, I'm sorry honestly I was afraid it's not like i wanted i need to i didn't want to do it the people were disturbing me and since you were not around i thought since i was a king let me do it and samuel said you have done foolishly he said if you had allowed me to come god would have established your throne so it would have now be son of saul not son of david he said because you have done this the kingdom is taken to you for god has found another man after his heart just for violating the priesthood how many people violate the priesthood today and they don't care right all kinds of people any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right So that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about Uzzah in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate right remember that there was a time when the ark of god was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uza, for his sincere love for God, wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother, don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once miriam became as white as snow white as snow right and aaron aaron it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him we have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally when they tell a man that god is able to do a miracle for you and that in 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 five months god can open you to fountains of blessings you know they look around and say eh, i know it's not like i'm saying god cannot do it but you see we have to calculate how a will become b and how c will become d look at how people try to run ministry today right 
they try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways look at how people try to generate finances for ministry when you see that you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality how did they build the tabernacle in the old testament because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness how did the supply come how did their clothes grow with them and their sandals today if we were before the red sea this is what apostle joshua selma would have done engineers where are you the spirit of Bazalel. and then we start constructing a bridge we saying that if i'm a prophet in five years we'll cross this red sea see that that's how it would have worked that's how much we have reduced god that's exactly what we would have done and then the engineers come and we say okay let's start doing everything let's start architects come let's start and then where are the kingdom financiers and then prayer department where are, and then we keep praying and god says is that all to me and then after five years we say now you will cross the bridge slowly and while we are crossing we'll be singing choruses and when we reach there i will put a menu a monument prophecy walked into motion by apostle joshua selman shame on us because we call that the old testament we laugh at them we even say they are a shadow of us are you joking read hebrews 11. there are men who in their humanity we cannot even touch their shoes yet that's the old testament we are very quick to say it's old we have done away with it but we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done it's in your bible people invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies when was the last time you saw that when was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones? You are laughing. It's a serious thing. Look at bomb blasts happening on around. And there are men of God all around. And we claim we are anointed. They even put it on our posters when they invite us. Anointed man. Joshua Selman. Shame on us. Let me tell you. If this is what we think will bring Christ back, we are joking. How many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems? God. Look at look at Jesus. Jesus inspires me. These guys who were with the guy that was crippled, they knew that if they could only see Jesus, that situation would be over. Is it not in your Bible? And they said, let's tear this man's ceiling. We will explain it to him afterwards. Today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves. Is that true and do a lot of carnal things there is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and 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 and, and that of unbelievers if i stand right now and i minister to sam and he falls under the anointing people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft where did we leave our spirituality is it not in your bible that jesus with the divine light walked through people on a cliff they were trying to kill him he walked through them like a spirit where is that generation i wanted to show us a video it's just that um we we, we didn't have it i didn't discuss with the media would have shown us that video um of patricia king right i know they don't have it they may not have it now otherwise you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into God doesn't mean some other people are not. The divine life. We shout Zoe. We shout Zoe. But there is nothing Zoe about our lives. If they shoot me, I die. Zoe. Right? Every, ep every epidemic is in the society. And it embraces me, Zoe. Now, I don't say this in a derogatory way. I'm saying this to challenge us. I guarantee you, if we learn how to receive that Zoe life, you will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. I look at people line up for counseling, and I bleed in my heart because I say shame on us. It means we are doing very small. 
a sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is god speaking to tonight where have you reduced god let me tell you one day maybe i'll come in the night i'll bring a chair here one coin on here we'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i'll share with you some of my encounters when god began to work with me some of you if i share it as you are seated now you've seen me every day you've even eaten with me but you will not believe it because you say it's a lie encounters with angels all kinds of spiritual encounters because i believe in him i believe in him i'll never forget the first time i had the audible voice of god let me tell you something if you hear god you must have faith you see that it's not about maybe i'm trying to calculate you must have faith listen at the at the mount of transfiguration when elijah and moses appeared what did peter do peter recognized them immediately had he ever seen them who told him he said what i see three people we say privilege that means i have questions to ask let's prepare three beds one for elijah one for moses because he thought they came to pass the night with jesus and discuss a lot of things when an angel appeared to mary mary was not afraid meaning it was a natural occurrence it was the salutation she was afraid of not the angel today if somebody say he has seen an angel say, i beg jerry angel where you think angels are just like that yet the bible says are they not ministering spirit i'm showing you why we have become carnal we threw away the holy spirit we are gradually kicking the holy spirit out in a bit to do what we call word 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 right word 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 just the word give it the word and, and don't give me anything else there are even people who reject jesus and say just give me bible give me bible jesus go once it's not bible even jesus should go away and the devil likes that theology if it is bible you want zondervan keep publishing new versions keep coming out and we keep carrying the bible and we convince ourselves that because we are holding bible and reading it we are growing in the world but we are becoming carnal that's why death is rampant it is that carnality do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us is that true witchcraft in the village is not a shock an average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft so if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear he will believe it but in the church ah if i disappear here now now in this place finally the article will be complete the article you have been writing you will pay new nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it confirm hey which is on suit Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church called spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality so if i come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man god is in koinonia what five jeeps is here oh. in bible days men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man 
will threaten a nation not a politician but elijah not in a radio station he made a declaration to the heavens he vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said me i speak there will not be rain not god revealed to me i stand in my office over this territory and i said there will not be rain and he went to bed it was by sorcery jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head how many men of god have disgraced themselves on television how many men of god have disgraced their ministries in newspapers how many men of god predicted that 2012 is his rapture huh how many you see how we, we we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity. Because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healings and speakings over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't, you are liars. We are back. must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of god will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of god in these days the lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week i've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the holy ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit i'm telling you god will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me God taught me so many things. Secrets in the Bible. There are times that I will, the Lord will be visiting me and his presence, physical cloud. I'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about. Real cloud, like a fog, will fill the room. And I'll lie down there and the pages of my Bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures. I hope you believe it. Hallelujah. We have reduced God. We have reduced God. It's, this is too bad. To an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up, people look and they say, Kai, who knows him? Look at how you put pressure on men of God. People come for miracle service, we have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. 
It's a shame. It says, he that has a son has life. Has life. Look at what Jesus did. An example of what we should become. Jesus, five loaves and two fish, he multiplied it. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere we go, we are doing bad or at least average. And yet we claim to have his spirit. There are people who even brag and say, I have the spirit of Jesus without measure. Where is it? Where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here, you have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray? They come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense. I am a prayer warrior. But there is a, there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer. It follows their teachings. It's like a spirit. It's like a finishing on your words. If you are a man of the altar, it truly, that fire, it's not just the shouting. There is a communication of life. How many people claim they are prayer warriors? And they stand and speak and while they're speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me many of us did not start like this God is speaking to us many of us when we started we were spiritual we meant business with God eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the holy spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today there are people with hiv cancer there are people in need of the zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have zoe i am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech. Because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, this is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around. And we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, like, like Solomon, an intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i was sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives I remember a man called Peter Tan. The first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, he was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. I just saw a man who was short and bald-headed. After speaking to me, then I asked, who are you? 
and he didn't respond to me he moved a while and then he turned and said paul the first time i would see the picture on the internet i said this is the man i saw yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the name koinonia was a revelation it's not that i just sat down and said kai what should we call it now no no right now everything we do is sensual and carnal the exact blueprint and the things that we're doing in this ministry were a revelation a revelation by god it was the spirit of god that revealed to me the secret of church growth now i'm not saying i'm throwing away materials and all of that it's good i've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves but I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, let me have somebody here, just one person, anybody. You're a visitor, you're a pastor. Don't worry. You came all the way. Oh, you served in Jigawa and you are here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I'll use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things we say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said who do men say i am one day the holy ghost will ask you who do men say i am say yeah you are the spirit of this you are the and then he says who do you call me and you say i don't know you and he says now right my name is the spirit of life and to you that becomes a revelation at once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation when was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for a retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately, in the kingdom... You must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense. They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. They just come up with songs. The reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income. When was the last time you stood in his presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit? When was the last time you went to minister, man of God, and you stood in that meeting and when you finished, people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought, but they knew they carried the spirit. When was the last time, because of your teaching, someone just turned and said, Lord, I will seek you. 
and lock yourself three days. Do that today in our generation. And people say you are over spiritualizing things. So God is not like that. This guy came all the way from where? From, from Jigawa State to come for a meeting because there is a hunger. It's not a conference, it's not a convention, but hunger brought him. Right? God must show us something in this generation. Otherwise, these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us. God must show us something. That's my cry as a man of God. I cry to God and I say, Lord, I don't want to do the ordinary. There is something you've got to show me. That's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory. My ability to translate the realities in Christ. Let me tell you something. My, my goal, I've seen it in visions but they have not happened. I saw one time in a vision. Let me share with you one vision that I had. One time, I, I say it jokingly, but truly, truly I had a vision. And a ghastly motor accident happened ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like i was caught up from somewhere a physical location with my body and all of a sudden i appeared there and it was just like a shadow like this just passed through those dead bodies and including the car there was a sound like the car the way it hit the impact it came back as though nothing had happened ah may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days God bring us to this place. A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible where you see that many things happen to people? Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel. Because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do his best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them. Because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit. For you to do that, you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry. Because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension. But how many people are that willing? Bless you. How many people are that willing? How many people are that willing to see the power of God? Transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now. I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach, I don't like people turning to me and saying, Man of God, your message was powerful powerful in what i want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that i want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming not just that a great man of god visited a place that's not enough and this life is in his son he who has the son has this divine life but the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ. It must be translated to find expression. The more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life, the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. And then you become, as I would say, the envoys of his presence. 
careers of his glory careers of his power then you will see the eyes of the blind open then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped hallelujah while i was ministering over the weekend there was a woman who i don't know if they went to wash her ear or something and then the ear was blocked during the workers conference of cdc and i called the woman out and standing face to face i said i can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth one time benihim was laying hands on people and they were falling down and or or robots looked at him and said benny don't just lay hands on them he said give them something oh fine can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now media is ready with the video okay media just just play guys maybe you can sit down and then after that you we'll come up let's let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video and um it's a video of the supernatural is to spoil you and then i'll come up and, and and wrap up very quickly In San Juan, Puerto Rico, where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place. The Lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways, angelic visitation, uh, very unique signs and wonders, which we'll actually show you in a few moments. You'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances miracles all those good things with people deepening in their worship and and loving the Word of God and so it's a it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out so we're at the house of uh, restoration and mercy with pastor Dennis Roja and uh, it's just awesome what is taking place pastor Dennis is one of the most humble people that I have ever met he's so precious has just a small uh, work and a very humble work it reminds me of, of, of where Jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things um, pastor Dennis uh, was uh, in, in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here uh, because uh, we just dunked them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, two pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it is filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out comes back in. Uh, right now in the current church that he's in that he has a Bible open on the podium and oil just fills the pages of the Bible it's filling the pages of the Bible and uh, little gemstones little rough cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium 
And then as he squeezes the Bible, the oil comes out, copious amounts of oil. This particular oil smells like myrrh. It's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it. And it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has. And at the same time, these kind of um, manifestations are happening. In fact, he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church, off the beams, onto the floor, onto the seats. And it's just nonstop, continuous pouring out of oil. At the same time, these manifestations are taking place. Um, there's souls being saved. There's people being healed. Intense worship and prayer. Uh, deliverances. People are being set free. This is truly a move of God. And that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. It must bring our focus back onto Him. They will get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prince. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited and the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away. The cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way. And on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice, but when you're here, you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room. And so it's really an amazing time. Uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying. And they were uh, praying, and as they prayed, the Lord visited with an audible voice. And with the audible voice, the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the twelve uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the twelve tribes of Israel and that he had an assignment for him to do in that way and so then the gemstones uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month they start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st he had all 12 stones with the amber one being the last one when you see them in, 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 in person they're just brilliant and causes a worship an adoration in your heart and awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them. Absolutely outstanding. 1,200 gemstones, over 1,200 gemstones have fallen. The 12 uh, special stones that were given to him uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord. And the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel, I believe. And uh, many other signs and wonders, such as the oil and the, the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil. But all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. 
people don't understand, they think he's of a cult or whatever, but I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied in Acts chapter 2, he said, in the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvests. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to is not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things thank god for these things we just finished a financial series but let me tell you the truth god is looking for revivalists god is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with and i've made myself available god knows with my entire life you reign you ancient zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, spirit of the deep. And we Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. And we Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life. The divine life, the incorruptible seed, 
of the word of God we want to become epistles of power break forth oh spirit of the deep cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your own oh seek you ancient Zion's king cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Say, you are mighty on your throne. 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 We refuse to reduce your power. We step up the standard. Mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty.
you are mighty on your throne. Enough of nominal Christianity. Enough of powerless Christianity. Enough of faking it in the name of faith. There is a substance, and this life is in his son. The Soe life, the divine life, the energy, the ability of the spirit. The spirit of the Lord that will bring awakening, signs and wonders, miracles and breakthrough. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. We sing, you ancient iron steam. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Break forth the spirit of the deep. Cry out in our midst, O God. Let the spirit of adoption cry, Abba Father, Abba Father. Let that cry of revival, of a ministry of power, a ministry of the spirit that can change lives. We will not deviate from the part of the apostles. We will not deviate from the part of the prophets. We will not deviate from the part of spiritual progress. We will not deviate. We refuse to bend. We refuse to conform to the powerless dissertations of men. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Say, you are mighty on your throne. I need power in my life. 
I'm tired of taking it. I want the soul life. I have received the son. Lord, let the life, let the realities in Christ be manifest. Let the realities in Christ be manifest. I'm tired of a powerless ministry. must walk conscious from today if you have received the son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. your voice and pray one minute I am determined to be supernatural in every way in every way no the sons of God are not natural people they are supernatural in every way pray my hands are supernatural my words are supernatural lift your voice and pray My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power, the sway life. The power to heal, the power to alter the destinies of people, the power to transform their lives. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in my life. 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 Say, you are mighty in my life. 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 You 
For you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that from today dead religion will die out of your life I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Zoe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves that the earthly the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly i pray in the name of jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life that your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders that when men need god to show up they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory I pray for you may your words carry the power from heaven may your words no longer be barren and powerless may your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you may they bring healing may the words bring grace may they bring life like the river in Ezekiel 47 that everywhere it flows let the fish that was dead come back to life let the souls that are dead come back to life I pray that from today your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death wasting the time of God's people may you step into an unusual dimension I like you to receive what I'm releasing upon you is a ministration of the spirit many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk you will begin to see the demonstration not just in talk 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 with no results there are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there all of a sudden your territory begins to react because there's a way life not just that which is in christ alone that which has been manifest right here right now right here right now right here right now you will go back to your territories many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them you didn't plan to pray for them but you took the presence of god you took the life of heaven so way the life that controls heaven so way the life that upholds all things i'm praying for you that everything that has defied god in your life in the name that is above all names may that so way life come upon it right now may that so way life come upon every sick body here right now may that life of God let it come upon every dying spiritual life so the Lord has many ways of delivering his own the second thing I want to communicate tonight is that as powerful as God is please listen as powerful as God is the possibilities that come to men from God depend on the quality of the vessel being used please listen carefully it does not just depend on the might of God the vessel being used has a lot to do with what reaches the saints I sense a strong anointing here. I'm seeing lights. 
lights this is what i see when i begin to talk about these things the lord puts a witness to himself lights overflow one Horashila has kuba harita to siata. Paru de silehe prakotusu. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. We see the rain of your love. We feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain. Let it rain. Open the flood. sit down all vessels do not allow the same possibilities of God to reach men the power of God is not just limited by demons and principalities and powers the capacity to the mystery of death that is provided by the vessels can amplify the hand of God as far as providing spiritual possibilities is concerned so it is true that God intends to do a thing within this is domain called earth. But listen to me. A vessel can be so limited and because that is the vessel God has to make do with. God will have to navigate around the allowance that the death of that vessel can provide. Listen very carefully. So that many times what we experience in the meeting is not necessarily all God could do. It was what the level of the death and the alignment of the vessel allowed. Therefore, we are mandated as privileged stewards of this mystery to continue to die and to continue to expand because there is a relationship between our death and the glory that is released. Are we together now? Most of us are not aware of how many things on earth really depend on men there are so many things on earth that do not depend on God but the world of men is where the allowance or the disallowance happens and this is a deep mystery because God made it so did you know that you can have a vision of you being delivered and you being blessed? The challenge is that the miracle you want to receive does not just come generically. You see, the miracle you want to receive must be lower than the level of death I have gone through to really reach you the way it left heaven. If you are faced with a situation that is higher than the death level of that vessel, as mighty as God is, that vessel will not be able to receive the richness of what was sent to heaven. This is more than just being anointed. This is becoming a conduit for greater, heavier, and weightier dimensions of the possibilities of God to reach men. I arrived and my eyes was almost full of tears as I saw the crowds of people. I know you came to see God. We agree. It is true. But you can imagine in a meeting where people start and welcome the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet burdens remain there. Challenges remain there until a man shows up. And then the burdens begin to go. God was there right from the beginning of the service. Are we together now? This is very powerful. 
And every time God grants us the privilege to grow and to transit in the spirit, we rejoice not just for ourselves alone, but that we have been able to capture greater dimensions of possibilities for the sake of the saints. So that what could not be solved yesterday can now be solved today. This is the beauty of growth. This is the beauty of power. This is the only justification why people should continue to listen and receive from a man. It should be predicated on the fact that there is an intentional commitment to grow, to expand, to be able to host more of God. Nina Kawabo Sir King Salama Nina Kawabo So when God speaks, listen, the dynamics of the working of his word is that mediating between God, the communicator of that dimension, and man who is the final recipient, there must be men. And this is where the problem usually is. The problem is not with the power of God. The problem is not with the wisdom of God. The problem is the limitation of the vessels that he has to make do with. Are we together now? Yes. So the greater the death, the more the life, the power in experience of the reality of the Christ. Here's what the Bible says. Now unto him who is able to do, listen, exceeding abundantly far above all we ask or think. Then it says according to the power, not that works in him, that works in us. He is able to do. There's no problem with his ability. But that ability, the manifestation is limited by the power that works in us. The dam can supply water. The borehole can supply water. But what enters your bucket finally is the size of the opening from the nozzle of the tap. If the tap is open so small, it can make the dam look limited. And you can be receiving drops of water and you will have to make do with what is coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so God wants to cap this revelation of this mystery of fruitfulness in our lives. God wants to wrought mighty deliverance. What is deliverance? A separation from the obstacle, the impedance that stands before you, around you. The obstacles don't have to be spirits. They can be situations. Hallelujah. If you are giving a death sentence in terms of a medical report, 
That report is looking for the power of God. Remember, we have taught here that the real activator of the possibilities of God is his divine power. His divine power flows through the channel of faith. But the final mystery that works the wonders is his divine power. The Bible says, according as his divine power that hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Tonight gathered here are several people with conditions that only God knows and only God can tell. But one thing I can tell you is that the king of glory is in this place. And not only the king of glory is in this place, the vessels that he has so engraced are also in this place. It is not a popular revelation in the church. Every time people say God is here, they are right. But the presence of the vessels that will be used by that God is often trivialized. Men are very powerful and they are very important. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, burdens will fall. Tonight, yokes will be destroyed. Tonight, God will turn the lives of people around. Hear me? There are things that have no business happening in your life that will be made to happen. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Please understand this. Creation did not stop. There is nowhere in the Bible that God stopped creating. Mm -mm. Creation, God only took a break. But creation continues. Not just plants and animals. To create means to make material, to create a scenario out of nothing. You have no business getting a job before the year runs. But the word can create. You have no business coming out of pain. You have no business. But the word, the Rima word, revealed, backed by the power of God. You have no business being healed today. But the Bible says to appoint unto them that morning in Zion. To appoint means to set the date when it happens. Not only to reveal that it will happen, to make it happen. Hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please hear me. Shake away unbelief from your mind as we begin to pray. Don't let the, the devil will use the flesh. This is not the first time you are attending a miracle service, he will tell you. This is not the first time men of God are praying for you. The moment those things come, you have the responsibility of fortifying your mind. Your refuse, reject it. You can insist by faith that tonight is my night. You can insist by faith. Father, the grace that has not come upon my life before tonight is the night it will come. Lord, the dimension that have not been opened to yet, this is the night I will receive. Hear me. Hear me. There are no special days for anybody. It is your faith that makes it special. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, any day can be that today. Hmm. Are we together? Blind Bartimaeus is at the way towards Jericho. And Jesus will be passing for the last time. And the guy would have said one day he will come back again. And he would have missed it. The Bible says he cried. He cried, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus looks at him and with what you would think is sarcasm, he said, what should I do for you? And then he says to regain my sight. And that man regained his sight. Only people who insist with understanding receive anything. Hoping and wishing that God will touch me is a waste of time. We'll share the grace and you'll go back frustrated. But there are people who have come. Some of you have been fasting. Some of you traveled from outside of this nation with in this nation with hunger there are people standing outside people following online why will you allow the service finish and you just go back like that you are a man of God you have come from far why don't you carry something of substance that you can go back with as a witness that you met with the power of God 
Is God speaking to us? One scripture and then we'll pray. Isaiah 61. This is a scripture that is very powerful. The hand of God is moving in overflow one. I continue to see this thing. Overflow one. I'm seeing it's an impartation. It's not just a deliverance. There is a pouring of graces that is coming on specific people. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had ordained. The word anointed there is ordained. Ordained me to preach good tidings to the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. All, not some. Three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, giving them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness it says that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified go to verse 4 and they shall build the old wastes they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the limitless dimension of what the Spirit of God can do upon it. How shall these things be, Mary said, seeing that I know not a man. He says the power of the highest shall overshadow not come upon overshadow you are under the influence of the spirit of god and under the influence of the holy spirit there is nothing that cannot happen please listen to me under the influence of the spirit time can be compressed under the influence of the holy spirit there are things that should not happen but can happen now the lord is that spirit the bible says this lord we have been talking about is that spirit not just the father seated on the throne the lord who delivered the righteous the lord who anoints is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the lord is you will know that he is there by the miracles you know that he's there not just because you ask him to come alone you are here Working miracles, I worship you, I worship you, you are ye, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you. I worship you, I worship you, way make miracle walk, promise me, light in the darkness, that is who you are, way So you know he's in a place not just because you believe by faith but there are tokens there are representations that attest to and validate the fact that he's in the midst of his people listen let me tell you my brothers and my sisters tonight you are in for an encounter 
you are in for an experience it's a shift in the spirit and i want you to believe we are immersed in an atmosphere of limited possibilities limitless possibilities do not allow the devil to lie to you that your case is so great that god cannot meet you that god cannot touch you let god be true and let every man be a liar hallelujah now but listen i learned this from pastor benny i will share this briefly and then we'll begin to pray haven't worked in the healing ministry for more than half of a century benny Hinn shared that one of the challenges he had observed with people when the power of god begins to move is they are not ready to release the pain the sickness the infirmity you will think just because you are in god's presence and you expect him to touch you to heal you he will not take something from you that you are still holding back this mystery was demonstrated in the woman with the alabaster box when she came to jesus the bible says it was made of spikenard pure nard a year's wages she broke it at his feet and it became an instrument of worship there are people who come with medical reports they come with pain they are just coming to inform god that this is what they are going through they are not ready for the exchange yet listen this is a very simple but powerful spiritual key when you come to god the bible says the instruction is to believe that he exists number two that he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him how does he reward there must always be an exchange your weakness for his strength the miracle the testimony are we together now so you must be able to hand over everything here's how the bible puts it all my cares and burdens unto you I roll. that's a part of the song that is powerful lord i come to you with this array of family challenges i'm handing it over to you i don't expect to go empty there are many people whether god touches you or not you will go back full because you didn't give him anything until you transfer the burden the sickness the bible says cast all your cares it didn't say god will do it it is your responsibility to say lord i'm tired of carrying this infirmity i'm tired of carrying this evil report i bring it before you and i cast it down when you are now empty god says i now exchange that which you have brought for what i have brought nobody comes before god empty and God does not come before any man empty. The problem is there must be willingness for the exchange. God will not rest upon you when your hands are full, when your mind is full. Listen, it is very important. You are a man of God here. If all you come to give God is frustration of ministry, Lord, the church is not growing. Lord, this and that, that's, the, mm -mm, that's not the issue. Lord, I hand over everything. Come So it's time to carry your bills that is killing you and surrender it before him. It, listen, it's time to take the sickness. It's time to take the, all the concerns. Don't take some and leave some. Carry everything. Ah. I cast my crown before the highest Kings 
When your hands are too heavy, you cannot receive anything. You will need to take away, bring the report from your office. Bring the report from a doctor. Bring everything. When you lay it at his feet, you now lift your hand ready to receive the healing, the miracle. You don't come before God just to inform him. No. God is not interested in just being aware. He's interested in doing something. Cast your care. Listen. Coming to God and releasing everything is proof of faith. That you come before him and say, Lord, if you do not help me, I don't know where the house rent is coming from. We are 11 in this family and it's clear that there is a yoke upon this family. You may think, listen, you may think because you are always appearing before him, it means you are casting your care. No. You have to intentionally, consciously say, Lord, I don't want this sickness again. Take it. I'm tired of this life of poverty and failure. I'm tired of this life without results. Are we together now? Yes. And one of the ways that we cast our care is through worship. Another way that we cast our care is through prayer. Very powerful. You can pray and say, Lord, take everything. Take everything. Tired of the burden of ministry. Tired of the burden of my family. This is not how you designed me to work. Take it. And then when you are now empty, remember when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Are we together tonight? It does not take God anything to lift you. It does not take God anything to bless you. It does not take God anything to cause men to bless and honor and lift you. Listen. Benny Hinn said that many people come to his healing crusades and they are ever conscious of their sicknesses, conscious of their infirmity, and even when the power of God is flowing, the fortitude for reception is not there because they are busy meditating. The size of this problem, can God solve it? And God is wondering and saying, who told you, who, who educated you about me? Who told you about me? The Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Tonight, God is able to transform. Tonight, God is able to heal. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To transform and to heal. Apostle, you don't understand the gravity of my situation. That's why. It's your mind and your perception that is being enlarged by the power of darkness. When God comes, the Bible says the mountains skip. Skip. And he clears a way for you. Is someone ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. I'll give us two prayer points before I begin to minister. And I want us to please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. The first prayer is you are going to ask the Lord. Listen carefully. You are going to ask the Lord to do something to your faith tonight. I agree and I concur. 
that sometimes the prevailing challenges can be so great and so mighty you will sit down and begin to wonder in our finite minds how will God navigate this and bring and birth this miracle for me are we together now this is where the spirit of faith comes the faith of God it says this is the victory that overcomes even our faith you're going to pray Lord my faith is strong I believe you I believe you lift your voice and pray let it be from the depth of your heart tonight my faith is strong I believe that this is the night the night when you transform the night when you heal the night when you deliver the night when you turn my family around is someone pray this is the night of your power the night of your glory this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and manifested his glory manifest your glory oh God father help my own belief I reject unbelief they limited God in the wilderness by saying can God make a way can God make a way you are in ministry pray tonight is a night when you expand when you receive you are in business pray career pray you are in ministry pray for your family pray release your faith hallelujah listen prayer point number two the bible says ye have not because ye ask not you have not because you ask not he said ask and you will receive that your joy may be complete ask and you will receive he didn't say give us any day give us this day our daily bread listen when you come to God it is not only important that you are aware of who he is but you must come to God stating specifically the way and the manner that you desire or the area that you trust him to step in and come through for you for every time Jesus would meet with a blind man a lame man he would ask them what do you want that you are lame does not mean you want to stand you must be able to verbalize your requests you must be able to communicate listen I know that many of you have written your prayer request but I want to give you the next two or three minutes alone with God open your mouth and state the things that you desire by faith to happen to you tonight lift your voice and pray someone is talking to the Lord communicate your expectation when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream our mouths were filled with laughter and said they among the hidden the Lord had done great things for us it says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad then it says turn again our captivity like the streams of the south Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith in your heart. Pala 
Rabaruta Shala Bragada Balarabo, Kranta Lato Shala Gradida Balaraba, Rekete Balaraba. Someone is praying, Lord, my ministry is about to catch fire. There is a dimension of grace that must land upon my life. There is an operation of the spirit that must rest upon me. Is someone praying? I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life is changed I will never be the same My life I will never be the same I've touched your grace I will never Please look up. It is not very difficult for a man's situation to change. God is not a magician. You will need to release your faith with understanding. You are before the God of all flesh, the doer, the walker of wonders. He is truly a miracle walker. Please believe in miracles. Believe in miracles. They are not a fabrication of human intelligence. No. No. God can work miracles. God does miracles. God delivers. God heals. God lifts. God transforms. God sets free. That's what his grace can do. Never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life must change. I will never stay the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will never preach the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will never sing the same. My life is changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the atmosphere of God's glory, listen. Don't wait until you are called by prophecy. Don't wait until you are prophesied upon. Let your heart be open to receive. Let your heart be opened to rise in the spirit. I want to pray now. Please listen. Listen to me. The power of God is very strong here. Let's work together now, guys. Deliverance, when kept within the boundaries of the word of God, is powerful. Listen. Because for many of us, let me tell you this, I submit to you. Listen, please don't inconvenience the guests. The space is all right. Just, just let them be, please. Listen, it's an interesting thing that many believers are unwilling to accept that behind many tragedies are spirits. 
please understand this behind many operations listen when jesus was going to calm the storm every storm is made of two things wind and water you can see the water but you cannot see the wind every storm is made of wind and water there is no storm that is made of water alone jesus rebuked the water he rebuked the wind and the water was still there is no problem that is as a physical problem there are spirits back of it whether it is financial marital spiritual one of the biggest deceptions of darkness is to believe that your issue is just sociological or just marital no sir no sir there are spirits more spirits than men on the earth in one man there was a legion in one man that's to tell you how much scarce bodies are on earth for these spirits six thousand spirits in one man please listen to what i tell you your financial situation can be masquerading itself and dribbling you all around and it, yes there are principles here and there but hear me you are not free until the spirit that sponsor the operation is dealt with are we together there are you can only judge situations by what has affected you the one that has not affected you yet is there but just because it has not happened yet you may not know so the secret is to address the spirits behind it and not wait for them to create different scenarios that show you they are there are we together when we pray and minister to people listen we're, we're a very we're a very balanced bible-based ministry and let me tell you this by the spirit of god you do not help men when you leave the spirits that is back of their situations to go back with them now i know that here and there people abuse these things and do all kinds of nonsense that are not within the jurisdiction of scripture this is not what we are talking about we are talking of liberty that is provable that you can walk out before the service is done you are seeing the evidence that this is what has masqueraded itself you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life must change you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life must change you will never be the same you've touched his grace You can be a man of God here greatly ministry you are anointed but things may not be working and you may just think the issue is just ministry ethics preaching well that is wonderful but let me tell you he said I desire once and again to come to you but Satan hindered us it is not only angels that are on assignment there are spirits on assignment there are demons on assignment there are powers that are on assignment Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 what seest thou four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah against Jerusalem and against Israel that these horns have made it that no man doth lift his head he said but I have sent four carpenters it's a reality behind many families are spirits behind many medical reports are spirits behind many repeated patterns of frustration are spirits oh, oh, oh.
I shared the testimony of a gentleman many years ago. He was in ministry and um, I had the opportunity to counsel him. And while I was talking with him, as he entered my room, I saw a spirit just entering with him. And I looked at this dear gentleman, lovely, adorable, wonderful person. And I was politely going to hint him to say, sir, the Lord is already showing me what is behind your problem. And ah, the gentleman just shot me down and said, no, no, no. Don't talk to me about this and that. I said, that's all right. No problem. I respect you. I do this. Let me just pray with you. That's all I requested from him. The last thing he could remember was me beginning to pray. And then when he recovered from himself, like almost an hour later on, he got up. And for the next three days, this gentleman kept reaching me and said, Apostle, you have rattled my theology. What is this? Doors began to open like a charm in that gentleman's life. Listen, I hope you know that there was a relationship between the doors that were closed and the chains in the hand of Paul and Silas. It's very strange. They were bound hand and feet, the Bible says, at midnight. They lifted up their voices. They prayed and they sang. Suddenly, there was an earthquake because God himself came. And then, listen, the Bible says, the moment there was that earthquake, the chains by themselves fell. Immediately the chains fell. He said, all doors open. Not some. All doors. There was no use of key. The key was that chain. As the chain fell, the doors opened. Please, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Father, if there is any spirit entity that is back of my situation, it must live by the spirit and the grace of God. Lift your voice and pray. By the power of the Holy Ghost, tonight in the name of Jesus, every spirit that is not of the Christ, that is back of the situation around my life, my family, my business, my ministry, pray. Hallelujah. You see, the power of God is already touching people. Listen, I'm going to take a few minutes tonight to really address this issue of spirits because they are real. They are very, very real. Very real. Hallelujah. I have met so many spirits in my life, I've had so many encounters. That's not the basis of believing they are there. Scripture already tells us they are there. But let me tell you, they are there. And they are not there doing nothing. They are there causing pain. They are there manipulating families. They are there projecting things that are not of the Christ. But the Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let's pray. I want to begin to pray now. Please listen. Whether or not you are an usher, I'd like you to help those under the anointing. We're going to do a lot of praying this night while I'm ministering. Um, please participate in the prayer. Prayer is very powerful when done with understanding. Are we together? Now I want to pray for you and then begin to minister to people. Because there are real spirits behind people's situations. Hallelujah. First, I want you to bring out now. I'm not going to say anything. God is giving me an instruction. The power of God. I'm already seeing something like a blue smoke rising out of people. And these are spirits. And when that happens, the power of God will come upon them. I want you, whether outside or inside, just begin to bring them out here. We're going to pray and call on that name now. But the Lord is revealing to me. You will be very surprised. Some of you are standing for yourself, standing for your family. Please bring them out. This is the instruction God is giving. 
except God is not God. There is no spirit that is back of any one situation that will remain after tonight. Please quickly just bring them out. I'm seeing the power of God. I don't know why God is giving me this instruction. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Please bring them out. Let's just walk with what the Holy Ghost is doing. The strangers that must come out of their hiding place and let you be and let your family be. There's fire burning in this place. One more minute and then we'll pray. God is still locating people inside and outside. It's time for your liberty and your liberty in full, in full by the Spirit. Establishing the victory of the Christ over every life, every destiny. All right, we're ready to pray. Please lift your hands. Let me pray now. I'm seeing fire. That fire is coming on people as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As you shout that name, Jesus, I declare by the blood of the eternal covenant that every legal access upon which the devil is laying claim over lives, over bodies, over finances, over destinies, I invoke help that woman by the blood of the eternal covenant. It must go now at the count of three. Shout Jesus. One, two, three. I cause darkness by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command the powers that be by the blood of the eternal covenant that everything that binds men to spirits binds men to realities in the spirit. I come against it by the God of Jeshurun. Please bring them out. We release a sound in the realm of the spirit. We declare sounds of victory. Was he praying? My God. Chains. I'm seeing chains in the spirit. One more time, you are going to shout that name. Lord, if there is anyone here under any kind of chain, the Bible says to release them that are bound. As you shout that name, no matter how long that chain has stayed, it's time for you to be released. Are you ready now? Thank you, Father, for the honor of your word. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I break those chains now. Now, I break those chains now over families, over businesses. I break those chains now. Hallelujah. 
the Lord is showing me the vision of a graveyard. I'm seeing the vision of a graveyard. And the Lord wants me to rebuke the spirit of the grave. The spirit of Hades. I stand by the God of heaven. And I declare right now. Anyone covenanted to the power of the grave. The covenant with death. The covenant with the grave. By fire. May that fire fall on you now. The covenant with the grave. The covenant with death I speak by the anointing of the Holy Ghost be free now be liberated now be free now Hallelujah. Now listen. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm sensing a unique grace for the healing of growths and lungs. Growths and lungs. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like a woman on a surgical table. This is what I'm seeing. I'm speaking right now. Every spirit behind the infirmity. My God, I'm seeing fire fall on people. Right now in the name of Jesus. Every lump, every growth fibroids, malignant growth, cancerous tissues. By the spirit of the living God. Let the life and the power of God touch you now. Let the life, help them please. Let the life and the power of God in the name of Jesus, I command those crows to leave those bodies now. I command them to dissolve now. Help that lady, please. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Growths. I'm still seeing growths coming out of people's bodies. Swellings of all kinds. This is not limited to women alone. Including men. Be free now in the name of Jesus. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more Everyone here in front. In this overflow and all the overflows, I declare that the spirits that lay claim upon any aspect of your life, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I command them to leave now. Pack your load and go at the count of three. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Out of their destinies now. Out of their lives forever. Out of their lives forever. Out of their homes forever. Out of their bodies forever. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. We are still praying. Now, the Lord is showing me something that I don't see very often. I'm seeing an old gate and I'm seeing chains on it with a padlock. This is a sign of stagnation. You are here and mysteriously, you have been in the same position. You try to move, you try to push. I'm about to smash that gate to pieces. Not to open it, to stamp it down. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Now help them please. Listen. I want you to shout Jesus from the depth of your heart. I decree and declare every destiny here that has been tied down by men, by systems, by spirits, so that you cannot move. By this shout of Tequila tonight, I declare every gate crushed and comes down now. Are you ready? At the count of three. One, two, three. I prophesy to you, move forward, go forward, go forward.
forward, go forward. Stagnation comes to an end. Retro apakoto shala rekete kete kete parus kaba embregeto sheleto sabaka. Stagnation comes to an end. Retrogression comes to an end. Hallelujah. Who is Bukola? I'm hearing a name Bukola. Bukola. Our time is gone. There is still a lot to do. Who is Bukola? Don't worry. Don't force and rush those who are standing in front. You're Bukola. Where are you coming from? Let me pray for you, my dear. Stand up and I'll pray for you. You are also Bukola. My dear, hold my hands. Listen, in the name of Jesus, this shade that I'm seeing be loose now. In the name of Jesus, I lose you from that chain. It is broken now and broken forever. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is showing me someone you walk in first bank. You walk in first bank. Who is that person? You need a serious miracle now. You walk in first bank. First bank. Let's hurry up, please. You walk. Who is that first bank? All of you are Bukola. Ma, let me speak to you. The grace for wealth. Stand up. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing currencies falling on you. And the Lord is telling me that there is a strange grace for wealth. This, this, is, this should be Kingsley's wife. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the spirit of the Lord, let that word come to pass now. I release you by the power of prophecy into that dimension. Prepared blessings by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'll pray for everyone, but the power of God is going to come on one of you now. Very mighty anointing is coming on one of you, and God is setting that person's family free. One of these Bukolas, right? So the power of God is coming on you, one of you. It, this is not something small. It's a, a mighty outpouring of the power of God. When that happens, um, I would just identify that one. Who works in First Bank? First Bank, you are a staff. Huh? No, you are not a staff of first bank, you are on contract. Is that true? You are on contract. I will still pray. This person I'm seeing is a bona fide staff of the bank. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing something that can cost you your job. Father, show this, my dear brother, mercy by the grace of God. Look at me, sir. I'm seeing a whirlwind on your head. I need to pray against confusion and pray against stagnation. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are set free now and you are free forever. In the name of Jesus. Please make sure you are observing the ladies. The power of God is going to come on one. That's the instruction God is giving me. It's very mighty anointing. When it comes on that one, I want to pray for them. Your father is a general in the army. Who is that? Your dad is a general in the army. I need to pray. We need to rebuke conspiracies. The Lord is showing me your father is a general in the army. Real army, military. Please, if you are that person, I want you to come. If you are that person, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. This is conspiracy. In the name of Jesus, over her family, let there be a mighty deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all of you for the various reasons why you have come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord himself give you testimonies. Very strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. There's no marriage. One, two, three, four, five. Five ladies. Nobody has settled down. Where are you? Please come. Where are you coming from, my dear? From Joss. 
I want to pray. You are five of you, all alive, five ladies. No one has settled down. What do you do? Contract staff with Sterling Bank. Wait. Sterling Bank. Sterling Bank. Yes. You will leave the bank soon. Amen. Listen to me. There is another job that is coming for you. Amen. When that job comes, don't fight it. It's the will of God. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying you should go and retire now. But I'm telling you that another job is coming. Let's pray. It's not normal. We need to break this. I'm seeing three ladies in my vision. I don't know why there's only one person here. These five, five families... Please make sure you don't tell lies. Don't just come and stand here if it's not. I will pray for everybody. Five families. No, not one person has settled down. Ladies, now. Don't cry, my dear. Jesus is in this place. Release the family now. Release the family now. I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing coals of fire and I'm seeing a horn on it. Release the family now. There is someone here. This is a very mysterious thing that happens to you. In a very strange way. This happens especially when you pray. For extended period, your whole body starts itching you in a funny way. You know how someone under the influence of a, what they call that drug? Chloroquine. That's what happens to you. Like physically, you begin to scratch your body. I must pray for you. Why is she here? Please. You are the one? Come. Madam, you too. Where are you coming from, ma? You are coming from Abuja. Come. We we'll attend to the photos you are holding here, eh? but for now, we need to pray for you. This is, this is not just evil, very evil. I have to pray for you. You too, my brother. Where are you coming from? Okay. You see, my dear people, I'm, no, I'm not saying if your body is itch, listen to the, the, the issue. I just saw fire, this row, right down, just like a sword of fire just passed. I don't know who that is for, but in the name of Jesus, let it bring emancipation right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Look at me, my dear. You believe in Jesus? I bring you life from this kingdom that we represent. Be free now from this demonic, satanic oppression. In the name of Jesus. Our dear auntie, let me pray for you. Just keep her there. Can you hold my hands, madam? I want to pray for you right now in the name that is above all names. Help her. Be free right now. I curse the workings of darkness over your body and over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Five families, hold my hands. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, let it be over. Let the doors be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you, my dear. I'm looking at you physically, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing an arrow inside your head. I need to pray. There is infirmity that has been projected in your body. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Can I pray for you? Is that all right? Father, help this lady. In the name of Jesus, hold my hands. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, be free from this that does not name the name of Christ. I set you free from it now in the name of Jesus. Five ladies, I'll just lay my hands on you. Be free right now. Let the doors be opened. Be free right now. Kai, let her go. Out now in the name of Jesus. She's also here. Your dad is a general in the army. Where are you from? Uh, Gombe State. 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 You are in Abuja, but you are from Gombe State. I'd like us to pray. Can I pray for you? I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? Don't be afraid. Look at me. Those who plan evil, in the name of Jesus, they will not live to execute their wickedness. You see, Ba, my brothers and my sisters, let me teach you something about life. The Bible says a man's enemy shall be the members of his own household. Father, 
preserve the life of this our general in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there is a family now God is breaking the plague of death the power of God is coming I don't know whether they are inside or outside the plague of death is being broken right now there is a mighty anointing that is coming on that wise to set them free from the plague of death please come very quickly I'll just touch you I don't know why they are here but we have to hurry up very quickly just a touch believe by faith it is over out of her now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus sir where are you coming from from Abuja. from Abuja yeah what do you do sir I'm a minister. you are a minister of the gospel I want to pray for you where, where, where are you coming from where do you come your state of origin do you plan to go this Christmas huh? I went for operation listen that's what I want to talk to you I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing you were supposed to have died It's because of the intercession of men that you are alive but then I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom we anything God shows we cancel you get the point now I'm seeing this man going in a bus and I'm seeing a truck I will not mention I'm not being antagonistic but the truck did not just shift your car it climbed it and everybody gone like that you see when God shows a thing it is because of the strength he has put in his church the power to change it completely are we together I want to pray for you you are very sick and even the surgery has not solved the problem because what I'm seeing is still there please hold my hand sir father in the name of Jesus Christ the son let this man not be given to the sword let him not be given to the grave in the name of Jesus I knock on the door of life and I speak to you sir by the power of the Holy Ghost be set free I fortify you by the power of God's word and I declare death will be far from your dwelling I speak that your going out is blessed and safe even your coming in is blessed and it is safe in the name of Jesus may the Lord show you mercy continually in Jesus name I pray family of five I need to pray hold my hands Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say In the name of Jesus I lose you and your siblings everything that is an orchestration of darkness I speak by the Spirit of the Living God you are loose now in the name of Jesus I declare liberty I restore dignity and honor what is happening to you I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going down here there's somebody the same thing is happening to someone there the same thing God is doing here God is doing to a lady there I declare be liberated right now in the name of Jesus please come sir let me just touch you by faith in Jesus name be set free come in Jesus name be set free 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 there is someone I think you are in ministry you are in overflow one the power of God is going to come upon you in a mighty way now please carry the person and bring the person here we have to hurry up I'm seeing the power of God touch the person hallelujah I'm about to release that grace for speed again Please come. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Shala super I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing blood dripping around the east. And the Lord is saying, those who are easterners, 
is this is a, this is a sign and a wonder when God shows me a map whenever I mention that location anyone who is oppressed within that location the power of God comes on them right now I'm seeing the east the east I release that power now the Lord is bringing liberation, eastern states. I'm seeing blood drip upon them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing an elderly woman with sharp pain around her lumbar vertebra. The power of God is touching that woman right now. Who is the person? Mommy, you're welcome. One to pray. Ah. Not everything that looks like sickness is sickness. There are many things that are projections of darkness. Are we together? Mommy, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Help her, please. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, release our mother in the name of Jesus. Mommy, I command that infirmity, that plague and that yoke of darkness be gone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me just pray for these two people now. This lady, where is she coming from? Okay. There is, it will surprise you how the grace for intercession will come on you. This lady, this fair lady I'm talking to you. In the name of Jesus, I speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. May that grace mantle you and turn you into a sign and a wonder. The Lord will show you things in your dreams. He will show you things in visions. Please bring our mommy for me. Let me pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, just touch her back for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare right now. This is not sickness. This is the spirit of death. I command the spirit of death, hell and the grave. To leave our mother right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Complete emancipation. Complete emancipation in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands just here. I don't know why, but this is what He's saying. Just right here to the wall. I'm seeing, I'm seeing people's stomach, the abdominal region. I'm seeing things like chains. Just bring those under the anointing as I'm talking. I'm seeing things like chains. These are devils of infirmity. The Lord is asking me to just stretch my hand. Please just allow me do my madness with God here and let the Lord set these people free. Please bring them out. We're hurrying up now in the name of Jesus. Karu salatu ziata. Kariza hashalam barita suba haseketa. Kradu saleto shala saba hasharatata ziakata. Rakata barada balakata prata sadabakato shalabranda skabariata. I place my hand on my stomach as a point of contact. Every planting that is not of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, be free from it now. <laughs> Hallelujah. The power of God is coming on one of the ushering ladies. One of these ladies with the jerseys. I'm seeing an anointing. I know you are ministering, but this is a miracle God is bringing for you, for your family. One of the ushering ladies. I don't know whether they are inside, outside. I'm seeing an anointing on one of the ushering ladies. This is, this is liberty that God is bringing right now. Shalus Karita Hasubadia. In the name of Jesus, my dear, look at me. 
shame and reproach is living your life now shame and reproach is living your life now the garment of shame and reproach is living your life now why is this gentleman here you are not the anointing outside come hold my hands in the name of Jesus I pray for you come you lifting your hands run come your time of change has come where are you coming from it's, it's all right it's okay don't worry that's why you are here do you know me that's why I'm saying you just relax you were in the crowd and God brought you here do you know why God brought you here because things are not working at all in your family God needs to turn things around if I don't pray for you what I'm seeing is you are celebrating Christmas morning and blaming people being the reason why somebody died and another person died because I'm seeing the spirit of death hovering around your family but the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit let me pray for you hold my hands my dear what did you study Do you have a job? I'm, I'm a copper in Ondo State. I'm, work, I'm, I'm a copper. I'm serving an NGO mm. for HIV in Ondo State. I want to pray for you. The favor of God that will come upon you from this miracle service will surprise you. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I stay the power of evil over your family. And in the name of Jesus, I release you to a realm and a dimension of strange favor. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but I want to release this grace for speed. Please, I want you to believe there is a real grace for speed. If you don't have it, you don't have it, period. There is a grace. Gashina, Gamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yanana, Gashina. Turkin Sarakuna Yanana Turkin Sarakuna Let's pray. Listen. It's a mystery how God brought me into this understanding. When you understand how speed works, you will never feel bad for any delay in your life. It's a strange system that insists that you catch pace with destiny. It works mysteriously. It works by compressing time. 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 Dominion over time is what speed is about. I want to pray for someone now. Sirkin Sarakuna. Father, please, I know that when I begin to pray inside and outside, people will begin to run physically. Honestly, why God does it, I don't know. I think it's just a prophetic acting of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. But every time I pray this prayer, the hand of God comes upon people and you find out that sometimes they begin to run physically. And I'm going to pray that prayer now. There are people here, God wants to take 10 years and put in one year. God wants to take one year five years and put in one month is it not written in your bible that i will restore the years god does not only restore things he restores time whoever can restore time must be god himself are we together in the name of jesus i decree and declare right now everyone under the sound of my voice inside outside parushalata i declare at the count of three father let this grace for speed restoration the mystery that gains time may that grace fall upon people within this auditorium overflow one two three four online in the name of jesus receive that grace one two three take that grace now 
that grace be restoration I prophesy pursue overtake without fail recover pursue overtake without fail recover in career pursue in marriage pursue in ministry pursue I'm speaking by the spirit pursue overtake recover pursue help that woman please overtake recover financially pursue overtake recover in your influence pursue overtake recover in your academics I pray for students pursue overtake recover pursue overtake recover Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The person who will run out now under the anointing, don't stop the person, just hold the person. By the person's self, mysteriously by the Spirit, there is a prophetic word, and this is how God told me, it's a force that will come upon the person. Please help her. Nah, nah, nah. It will happen by the spirit. They will come out by themselves. A strong anointing is not something you can resist. This is a sign and a wonder. How God does it, I don't know. Sarkin Sarakuna. There are three more people. That's why I'm standing. Three more people. It's a wind. It's a force of the spirit. The wonder walking power of Jesus. How the church has limited him, limited him, limited him. Please help them, make sure they don't injure themselves. Gashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yanana. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yanana, Kashina, Kamuna. I speak to all these ones that have come out by the Spirit. I'm declaring right now the chains that hold your feet. I'm seeing their legs specifically, their legs with chains. I lose you now. In the name of Jesus, I release you to destiny. I release you to destiny. I release you to destiny by the power of the Holy Ghost. No more delay, no more retrogression by the Spirit of the Living God. The force of God's power birthing possibilities in the lives of people. The power of God is coming on this gentleman, this one wearing polo. Yes, 
my friend the anointing of the spirit is coming on you in a very mighty way and i'm seeing a gate open before you and night is at your back and day is in your front i prophesy to you what i'm seeing and to everyone who connects with this prophecy i take night behind you and i command your morning to stand before you i take night behind you and i command the sun to shine before you in the name of jesus christ everyone lift your voice after me in the name of jesus please shout it say in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the anointing of the spirit i am breaking limits i am moving forward lift your voice and begin to prophesy breaking limits in the name of jesus i make progress is someone praying i make progress by the power of the holy ghost breaking limits breaking limits Hallelujah. We're about to pray for the sick now. Please listen. When we take our time to pray for the sick like this, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on someone just around the ministers. As I came here, I just spoke. I just saw fire just resting. Strong anointing from the front to my back. Strong anointing. The Spirit of God is resting upon people. Moving, shifting by the Spirit of the living God. How forcible. Pastor, there is a grace coming on you. The HICC pastor, a strong anointing, shifting you by the spirit. Step into a new dimension. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King of Jana, Nana, Kashina. New dimensions. We want to pray for the sick now. Listen very carefully. I believe in miracles. There are people here who are standing, trusting God to touch various aspects of their lives, their bodies. Kai, there is still a strong anointing around the minister section here. I'm seeing impartations, real graces, impartations coming by the Spirit. Impartations. People are drinking of wines. Ima, lift your hands. I amplify the prophetic upon your life in the name of Jesus. I amplify the prophetic in the name of Jesus. Hold your hands, two of you. Please help them. Take that grace in the name of Jesus. Amplify the grace. You step into new dimensions in the spirit. The spirit and the power of the word. Your words from today will be like fire. Fire. Refine us fire. Sarukin Sarabuna. Dan, come. Hold my hands. Grace is given for you to rise. No more delay. I place a ladder before you and I shift you by the spirit to the amazement of many. May your life change. Change like day and night. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise. Let's stretch our hands here. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Prophecy, no matter how accurate, is limited by time and the openness of the vessel. 
but that every time this is not a ritual it's a revelation to come before the god who can answer listen there are things here written that are death sentences there are things written here that will take only god to provide a miracle for there are things written here that are age-long captivities some of them even predate our coming to the earth but there is a name that is above every other name the bible says wherefore god hath so highly exalted him and given him an office a name a title the bible says that at the mention of that name everything in the earth in heaven under the earth will bow every knee and then every tongue will confess that jesus is lord even to the glory of the father i cannot begin to tell you the kind of tearsome testimonies that have come out of this this is not a ritual there is a covenant that sponsors the, uh, the answered prayer here and one more time and the last time really for this year i want us to agree in the next two three minutes wherever you are just stretch your hands as a point of contact and begin to pray that the egyptian that i see today in the name of jesus the christ of god i will see them no more forever is someone praying every evil report orchestrations of darkness if it had a beginning tonight is the end pray don't worry for those of you at the overflow who are still being ministered to just focus as the ministers minister to you while we pray Jesus we decree and declare that these Egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever <laughs> father we bring before you every situation here marital situations financial situations spiritual situations career situations in the name of Jesus we bring them under the covering of the blood every legal access upon which these requests continue to remain by the blood of the eternal covenant we nullify that access now in jesus name <laughs> father by this prayer we blot out handwritings and ordinances that speak against god's people we declare them nullified forever I stand as one sent by the Spirit of the Lord and I declare receive strange testimonies 
before this year runs out in the name of Jesus let every request tabled here be turned into testimonies testimonies are largely answered through men when it leaves heaven most times the testimonies we need we need them in their material form there are few testimonies that we need them just in the spirit form i'm praying every human agent that must partner with god partner with the systems of god to see to it that this request is granted we compel them by the spirit to do so now in the name of jesus every death sentence written here in the name of jesus we cancel it now hallelujah let it be done so shall it be we establish it in the name of jesus now we want to round up by prophesying over our lives this for me you've heard me say this is the best part of the service because this is where everybody gets an opportunity for spiritual realities to be created in your life please i want you to agree with me every proclamation that will come receive it by faith believe it and shout a loud amen as proof that you believe it are we together in the name of jesus christ delay comes to an end now Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Everything representing shame and reproach in your life and that of your family. It comes to end this night in the name of Jesus. pray for your spiritual life the kind of encounter that you have not had from january till now strange encounters revelations of heaven receive that grace in the name of jesus and if our god is for us then you could ever stop us and if our god is with us then And if our God is with us, every wall that stands before you and the next dimension, I decree and declare by the spirit of grace that was upon the nation of Israel standing before Jericho, I command every wall, go down flat. Financial walls go down flat. Career walls go down flat. In the name of Jesus. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Every man that must send for you to come out from where you are to where you need to go to, the gatekeepers of the dimensions that you seek to enter, I compel favor from them to you. I compel favor from them to you. In the name of Jesus. There are angels that herald the influence of a man. Listen, honor is a grace. When that grace is not upon you, no matter how noble you are, you will never be honored. Honor is a grace. And when that grace is on you, only God can take it away. It says, and Jabez was more honorable than his, not more prosperous not more favored more honorable many people do not know what honor is 
the fortitude for preference. There is an unction from God that fishes you out of the crowd, places you in a position where the eyes of men must discern you, reward you, recognize that which God has invested within you. Listen to me. There are many gifted people. The eye that can bless has not seen you. There are many men of God. The eyes that can discern and lift you is not there. Let me pray for you. There is a grace for honor. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may the mantle that makes for honor, territorial honor, honor at a national level, in the name of Jesus, receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. You will be surprised to see the workings of this grace in your life. When the grace for honor and favor is upon you, you will always be found in the midst of your destiny helpers. Listen, it's a mystery that cannot be explained. You will be suspended until they appear. Then you come. Listen. Is a waste to fight battles without reward. David said, what shall be given to the man that will do this to Goliath? Sometimes it's a waste to do noble things in the face and the presence of people who have no fortitude to discern and to reward. I pray for you. May the Lord position your destiny help us and cause them to love you and to honor you. The Lord asked me to wear this as a prophetic representation of what he is still doing. It is still a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven. Have the faith to believe. Don't sit down questioning. Leave your mind and trust God. It is within his power to make great. He takes a man from the dunghill overnight and turns his life around. I'm praying for you. For some of you, before this year is over, step into a dimension of prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Prepared parushalata. I release you into a dimension of prepared blessing. Listen, believers, I want you to believe this. Our time is gone, but I want you to believe this. Do not doubt what the power of God can do. Hallelujah. We're rounding up in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. The grace that will produce results of wonders in your life. May that grace rest upon you now. Prepared blessings that take you to realms. Ten years put in one month. I release that grace upon you. These graces are not some carnal show of wealth. No, they are time redemption systems. Understand what they are. They seek to conquer time and give you the convenience and the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, the grace for ease that brings you into supernatural results. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I pray for every family represented here. The sound of mourning. The sound of pain and anguish by the spirit of the living God. Let it come to an end this night. Everything 
anything that has refused to work in your life by the power of the highest I compel it to begin to work now men you do not know may they carry glad tidings about you to the ears of your helpers in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the presence of God the weightiness the substance of his presence that must rest upon you especially if you are in ministry by the power of the Holy Ghost be a career of divine presence in the name of Jesus everyone here trusting God for a job before this year runs out may God give you a miracle job Every family here trusting the Lord for any and every kind of breakthrough we call upon the God of the heavens in the name of Jesus let there be an, a, an abundant supply of that grace hear me whoever ignores you will pay for it hear me any man that fights you goes down instantly let me say it again any man that fights you goes down instantly i pray for every ministry here under the sound of my voice the grace and the wings of the spirit that will take you to dimensions untold may that grace rest upon you I pray for every man and every woman of God here, the errands and the horse that will hold your hands, loyal men indeed, may God give them to you. Anyone here who the testimony over your life is Ichabod, I declare by the Spirit of God, a restoration happens now. Thou shalt not be afraid of the snare of the fowler, nor the noisome pestilence, nor the destruction that wasted in noonday. Says a thousand shall fall by your side, and ten thousand by your right side. It says none shall hurt you, but with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. I pray for you, as a bird is escaped from the snare of the fowler, may you escape from every evil may you escape from every trap in the name of jesus christ i speak over your life go from glory to glory the remaining weeks of this year i'm speaking to you may they be weeks of strange wonders and finally let me speak over your prayer life over your word study life whatever has stolen your joy whatever has stolen your fire whatever has stolen your passion whatever has stolen your focus in the name of Jesus by fire let it be restored tonight may the gifts of the Holy Ghost operate freely in your life may you be a wonder first to yourself and then may you be a wonder to everyone around you in the name of Jesus finally anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death to see to it that you will not finish this year well to see to it that it will not be well with you and your family Gehazi came and met the woman and said it's all well it's all well with your household I pray for you because the Bible says to say to the righteous it shall be well therefore I speak over you it is well I declare over you all is well in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus for all of you who have traveled from far whether from another nation right down here from another city right down here you will go back with strange testimonies you will carry a fire and anointing that will be worth your coming here in the name of Jesus very quickly you are here under the sound of my voice please let's minimize movement and you are saying apostle I want you to give me an opportunity 
to give my life to Jesus Christ. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've seen the wonder-working power of God. I need Jesus as a matter of urgency in my life. Hear me? The Bible says, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Praise the Lord. Whether you are here inside or outside, there are people here who are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I need restoration of my relationship with Jesus. It is never too late to reconnect with him. Now, whether you are here, let's minimize movement, whether you are here inside or outside, we cannot close this meeting. This is the last miracle service for the year. Wherever you are, whether you are rededicating your life or you are handing your life over to Jesus for the first time, inside, outside, overflow, one, two, three, I want you to run and come and stand right in front of me here. Sustain the boldness to come. Don't be ashamed. Let's celebrate them as they come, Koinonia. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Keep coming. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. The Bible says, For God so loved you and me, he proved his love by giving, not taking giving his one and only begotten son now the firstborn of we the begotten that whosoever will believe in him should not perish is a law but have the way the life of god you have come many of you making this decision for the first time many of you rededicating your lives to jesus listen it doesn't matter why you came i want you to know that there is a god who loves you desperately unashamedly and is ready to give you a new beginning lift your right hand and say this very passionately say this truthfully from the depth of your heart say lord jesus please if you're joining us quickly come quickly come find a space and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart say with me again lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe join them quickly say i believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight until forever I reign in life I am a child of God I belong to the family of God amen keep your hands lifted while I pray for you father thank you you have brought these ones by your spirit you are able to save to the uttermost scripture says thank you for drawing these ones I decree and declare by the spirit of God that every legal stand that the devil has against them is nullified tonight by the blood. I declare by the authority of scripture your sins be forgiven and I declare that the Lord grants you a new beginning from tonight. I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. The power to love and serve Jesus is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now very quickly there are a number of you um, there are two gentlemen waving their hands. You can follow this aisle or this one, whichever will take you to the same place. Please follow them as we celebrate them. There will be a group of people to just receive you and just share a few things with you and you'll be back. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia?